Okay, so this is um, that's a short video on the design practice one, a virtual teardown exercise. So normally we would have in class an actual teardown exercise where I would bring out a certain product and groups of two, three, four students, depending on how much in class, they would be given the tools and they would normally disassemble the product. So this is, this is what was normally done when this course was being taught, face to face that is. But in this case, no, we, we can't be in a lab and we can't be working together for obvious reasons. So what we have here is a virtual theorem exercise. Right? So normally in a theorem exercise, we disassemble a, a product and we I try to identify these different um, aspects of the components that make up the product. Right? Traditionally, uh, the students would um, disassemble a food processor. Well, a small food processor or a vegetable chopper, however you want to call it, and they would disassemble it and you would have the container, the blades, etc. Uh, the moto, and they would take notes of all these things. They would take the material, um, estimate the material, they would take dimensions, they would try to figure out how it was made, uh, and also try to determine what is the function of each component. Right, so I will show in the end uh, a, a sample document from a, a previous class. But in this virtual edition now, we can't disassemble anything. So what I propose is that we go online and we disassemble, we look at a disassemble of a common household product, which is our oscillating fan. Right, and some of you will, obviously, I guess most of you would have a fan like this home, normal Lasco fan or whatever. And, when you press the button on the back, it would um, oscillate. So if it is you have the fan and you have screw, uh, just a Phillip head screwdriver, you could disassemble this yourself. But pay attention to the video before you disassemble because there's a spring mechanism inside that it could fly out and you know you don't want to destroy the oscillating part of the fan. All right, so you look at the video and um, you could get an idea of what we're looking at now. Before we go into the video, though, we have number one. The first task is to do a functional flow block diagram. This is what we have done in class in the example. So we know that the fan needs to oscillate to distribute the breeze um, back and forth. So that, that, is your, that is your main function of this mechanism. So we're not designing the fan. We design a mechanism to oscillate the fan or to distribute the breeze. I don't want to say oscillate the fan because by saying oscillate the fan, we're already saying that this thing must go back and forth. But we look at we want to keep our options as open as much as possible. So we say we want to distribute the breeze. All right, so you do a functional flow diagram of that, of that mechanism. All right, so it could be um, activate, switch, um, then you go to distribute, breeze and you know just like what we did in class you work in a group so you have a discussion about it then you go to the video and you review the video that in this link here it's a very nice video that goes into detail as to how the mechanism works and um also if it is you want more in information on it then you could do a youtube search of this 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 term here fan oscillation mechanism and you would see a lot of people would have disassembled this mechanism they, again they explain how it works or how to fix it for example if it is you have the tools you could disassemble it at home on your own right and then we could go on to number three so number three now is we assuming that we have understand how this thing works and you already have disassembled the product if it is, you will disassemble it on your own home. Um, we could go on to do number well, number three with these three main um. It, it has been abbreviated as three because normally we would have all this, but we cannot take physical dimensions because we don't have the product. We cannot measure the weight, for example. We cannot get an idea of the surface finish because again, we, we, we can't see it up close. We can't touch it. We can't hold it. So we're just looking at these three for now. So you could make a table. Right, and you have component. 
material, manufacturing process, and the functions. So it could be, for example, gear. Material, we could assume that is plastic. Or if it's metal, yeah, approximately metal. If it's aluminum, as the case with me, right? So normally over here, we put a percent surety, meaning that if we think it's, you know, if, if it's plastic, for sure, we can say we're going for 100% sure it's plastic. Right? So there's a percent certainty. The manufacturing process, so how the gear was made. Injection molding, for example, if it's plastic. Right? If it was metal, then it would be machined. And function, what is the purpose of the gear? Of course, there's a transmit rotation. Transmit rotational motion. Right, so that is an example of how we would um, construct this table with the three parts A, B, and C. Next thing they say here, draw an assembly hierarchy. An assembly hierarchy it's just a really fancy way of saying how is this product broken down in terms of components. All right, so I'll just come to the end here. We have some more space. So let's take a bicycle. All right. So the bicycle, we have the bicycle on top of a mountain bike, for example. And then we have some components here. So we have a main frame of the bike. Next thing we have the wheels. We have the steering. Next, we would have um, power transmission. And next thing, what we would have is what um, the seat accommodate. Um, if it's um, you could include things like safety, for example, lights reflectors, etc. Alright, so what is the wheels made of? The, meal, the wheels are made up of the tire, the rim, the rim in itself is made up of the hub, the spoke, also we have the tube, the tube has the insert. So you saw how much how in depth we go in with this, with this thing. Um, the power transmission, this will be a chain, sprockets. So you get the idea of how we how we do an assembly hierarchy. So this is how, when we conceptualize a product, an item. We have this overall product, and then we start to break down how we're gonna um, how we're gonna assemble components to make this product that we want. So that is the that is design in mechanical or engineering design in a way. Electronic design is the same thing. We would have a circuit to do a particular task, and then we break down the circuit into um, power components, input components. If we take an input from a user. Um, switching on off safety so in electronic design we also have a similar product hierarchy as is mechanical design or mechatronic design All right so for example lights lights will be into electronics now we will have a controller that will go on off we will have flashing circuitry and all that so this is the i'm, I'm just going a little off here just to talk about design in general Right, so normally now in a company or if you do not design, then we would start to look at the front aspect. So we won't design a tire, we will go and buy a tire. So we look at 26 inch tires, we look at 29 inch tire, what based on you know what, what are the requirements. Same thing with rims, we would buy a rim so we can have a different pair of tire with rim tube. We go to the wheels, well we assemble or we get the we the frame. Well, we want to design our own bike, so our frame might be designed. So this would be designed, meaning that we want to 
do our own frame design based on our requirements. Our stand might be different. We want it to be adjustable in different ways than it is right now because right now a bike the steering the steering goes up and down a standard mountain bike. But suppose you want it to go back and forth. So that could be a new design. Power transmission. Right now we use chain and sprockets. Okay? But we could replace chain and sprockets with um a drive shaft and again the back. Right? There are some bikes that you can check it out online that uses a drive shaft. And it's not so popular because one, it's more expensive. And um, two, it's just not required. It's just not, how this is not, it's not an advantage over what we have now, the standard bike and chain. I mean, people riding bicycles at 40, 50 kilometers per hour with chain. So, you know, what benefit really gain with a, a, a tri shaft on gears? Right, so this is really how our product hierarchy is. And I just went a little off here just to talk about design in general. Now the next last one here is that we want to propose a redesign of this fan mechanism. Right, so you have done the your, your functional flow block diagram. So now we link in that now to our number number four where we have a morphological chart with the components, and then now you're going to actually have different, um, so we have three columns. So the one column for components would be what we have now, which is what we have in the fan right now as it's on the video. So the other two columns would be alternative designs, or alternative concepts for each component of the functional diagram. All right, so this way now you could assemble using a morph chart, assemble an alternative design. For what we have in the fun. Right, so that way now we could conceptualize a different way to oscillate. Well, I say not oscillate again, but to distribute this breeze from this fan. Right, so I've seen some videos. We're trying to find videos for this um, particular um, exercise. I actually found videos where engineering students had been just a similar process and they have. A mechanism that rotating the fan 360 degrees. Right? So instead of going 180 or back and forth, this thing going, making a full revolution. But yet the wires are not twisting up and all that. So again, is 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 about conceptualizing and identifying the most appropriate alternative for the design. So that 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 will be the exercise for this design practice. And you know, don't overthink it. Right? The important thing is to document. Right now, the important thing is documenting your findings, meaning that we look at the components, we look at the gears, we assume what the material is, how it was made, we, are, we could do some internet searches. You know, how would you make a plastic gear, for example, and you could see different techniques again, but don't go too much involved. Don't go and try and spend 10 minutes trying to figure out, or 15 minutes trying to figure out how our gear is made. Quick search, five minutes, you read up, okay, injection molding, okay, you're good, injection molding. Right? And the important thing in the exercise is to understand why we're doing this for. It's not so much, you know, this is what we have to do and you have to get maps with, but it's really understanding the design and how we put together a design, how we put together a component. You would have done different aspects in the course, in, in the program, common up strength and materials, for example. How are we going to use that? And that is what this course teaches. All right, so um, I, just, I will just go through a previous student group um, we submitted design practice so you can get an idea as to what, what it is that they did. This, um, the, this was the product that the students had at that time to disassemble. Now keep in mind the tear down exercise um, uh, worksheet was in a different order than from what you have. So you would see things being answered a little different from what you had here. Um, they had to review the distribution and packaging of the, the product. You don't have to do that. So that's why you would see um, they have a little discussion here on the box. So this here is the, the photo that I'm talking about. So you, you stop the video um, and to a point where you could see as much as the items available disassemble. And then you create, you make a 
screenshot from it and then you label each one in an exploded diagram. So that is what this is here. Right? This is an exploded view. And then you make sure you label all the components. All right, this is an example of the assembly hierarchy for the food chopper. Similar to what we went through, they had different assemblies and then the, the breakdown of the different assemblies. All right, this, this is the chart with showing the material manufacturing process functions. So again, you, won't, you would not have dimensions because physically you can't measure. And they have the different functions of different parts. Right, what they left out here is that they didn't give like a percentage certainty of how short it is. So they say the blade is stainless steel. But how, how they know for sure is stainless steel? Why couldn't it just be steel at chrome to make it look shiny? Because it's a cheap food processor at the end of the day. So you need to put a percentage. So this could be stainless steel and the 60% show the certain that is stainless steel. Yeah, this, this was the functional flow diagram and the morphological chart. Now, the morphological chart was a bit um, undesirable because container that have plastic, glass, metal. I mean, them just put materials there, but they really also support what type of container is that? Uh, because then the option here, they have a funnel over here. So, you know, what, what was the shape of this container in their case? They need to, to, to go in a little more with that. The chopper, they have the fun options. So this here was what the product is right now, option one. And option two, each component is what they brainstorm and, and, and fill in on their own. Right, and then they're using that now to determine an alternative design. So this was the alternative design for a food chopper. Now they looking like a normal um, grinding, like what they used to use to grind that and stuff. But Again, that wasn't too creative, but it's up to you now. You is you need to be a little creative now in this fan mechanism. Right, so this is just a sample of um what I expect. It don't it does not has to be typed up, so everything can be hand hand drawn, but it must be scanned using a scan app on your phone. Don't take a photo and upload a JPEG. You need to do a scan app, scan to PDF, and then you upload it to the canvas right on canvas you would have the the um the button to submit the report and stuff for your different assignments so my assignments and, and projects are mostly if not all will be done like that where you do it and you scan it if it is a hand written calculations and stuff and then you upload right so have fun and Please feel free to message if you have any questions or anything.